Hello, welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping into the HChat version 1.0.6, which just hit the marketplace. So let's go ahead and get it updated because it doesn't do that on its own. So you're gonna to wanna to go into your profile into your content manager. And in my case, it's gonna be under not installed because we removed it first. So I did an uninstall to do a clean install uh, just because I was using some of the test files as well as a beta version. Normally, you're gonna find it under update available. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click on it and then you're gonna hit the download or update button. So here we are on the ramp with the new HJet version loaded up and ready to go. So in this video, we're gonna cover all of the new things. So one of the new items is the new settings and state persistence. What this does for you is it keeps track of all of the SIM options. So your doors, your statics, your GPU, the window shades, and whether or not you have the 3D passengers turned on, which is also a new feature. But effectively, all of these items, the visors, the lav door, you name it, even good old Rufus, these will be continued from flight to flight. Next up, we're gonna get into a section on the new GTC items. So inside of the right GTC, you're gonna find timer controls, minimum controls, the ability to now do ident, uh, which yes, works with VATSIM and Pilot Edge. You're also gonna find a screen brightness control. You're gonna find a checklist reset all button, You've also now got the ability to show 3D passengers, which we'll highlight, as well as a link to the manuals, tutorial videos, and the Discord. When we move to the PFD, there have been enhancements as well, including dual queue flight director. This allows you to move from the standard wing or chevron into a dual vertical and lateral bar queue. Also, minimums display has been added with a bug marker, and you can set up your HPA HG settings with wind flight director. All of that is part of persisted settings. Now we've also got altitude callouts, including minimums. Master caution and master warning default SIM AVARs are also now synchronized. Therefore, default interfaces for Honeycomb or Turtle Beach enunciators should now light up. When we come to the MFD and autopilot enhancements, there's been a big overall to the entire VNAV system. So there was a lot of fixes, including loading of altitudes into the flight plan constraints. So now with stars and approaches, complex stars are no longer gonna lock the system up and you're gonna get all of those altitudes populated into the GTC's flight plan page. You no longer have to manually enter them there. VNAV can now also be armed during the cruise phase and still maintain your CSC C, uh, mode, the cruise control speed mode, if that is active. RNAV glide path is now a custom calculated variable and therefore it'll be possible to intercept it uh, at a higher altitude before the FAFT with a standard three degree glide path that carries out to 29 miles. You're gonna see the ghost diamond at earlier stages and therefore be confident that you are going to intercept it when you are armed. Speaking of arming, approach mode arming will display proper glide slope versus glide path depending on what is loaded in the approach. Uh, example is when you're on FMS GPS mode for navigation, but you've loaded an ILS, it will now say glide slope in white and properly armed. Previously, you would see a GP because it thought since you were in FMS mode, that was what it should be showing. So now it's completely proper. It knows that you've loaded the ILS. You're just continuing to the IAF currently in FMS mode and you'll get the proper enunciations. Approach mode does not auto sequence. So keep in mind, the user must still change the nav source. The frequency will be loaded as long as the scenery has it properly entered into its data. 
There are third-party sceneries, especially ones that are downloaded from flightsim.to, and those have a problem where they didn't put the data in the proper fields and the sim won't be able to pull those back. So make sure to double check your frequencies. Finally, V speeds are properly displayed on the speed tape for V ref and V approach. These are very important because previously they were about five knots off and obviously we're trying to ride the speeds all the way to the ground. So let's go ahead, jump in, and look at these things in a little bit more detail. So looking inside, I like to get rid of my yokes right off the bat. And so as you can see, this is defaulted because it's a fresh install. So my uh, state settings are not present. You'll see I have pushed in the oxygen. That, I'm wrong. It persisted from my previous files. They're stored in a different location. So that did persist that I had the oxygen still in from the last flight. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and get the power on. And it is bringing up our Garmin units. So when we come down, yours might look different than mine. I was trying to clear it out with a fresh install, but it doesn't. On your first load in, you're going to come down here to your load manager, and this is probably going to be completely clear at this point and Log empty. System test. Also, okay. don't forget that this is how you load the sim. Loading from the weight and balance screen uh, in the flight plan and the world map, that is not how you want to load the sim. This will override and control it, including setting up your C of G. So if you're sitting on the ramp with your nose tilted up, come in here and fix everything. So you are going to need to add the pilot. True, you could be like saying, well, because I want to fly from the right side of the plane and nobody in the left side, but digressing. So we're going to come in, we're going to get our passenger set up. We're going to put in our cargo and we're going to go ahead and load up our fuel, something like that. So this is now going to persist. What that means is when we land, we're going to want to come in and deplane the people. So don't forget from the home menu, where you've got your aircraft systems, utilities, checklist, and performance, we've got our sim options and brings us to that page. So you want to make sure to deplane these people when you're done. Under your sim actions, you're going to see that it has grown. So we do have static elements. We do have the cargo door, the passenger door, and the main door. Note that as soon as you remove the parking brake, some of these things will turn off. So static elements is automatically going to remove. Also, when you start the plane up, it's actually going to force the doors closed and the cabin uh, door. When those cargo and cabin doors close, it will deselect them from your sim options as well. That way, in flight or while engines running, it won't allow you to open those doors anymore. Those persisted settings, when I restart my flight, when I leave, when I come back, these things are going to carry over, just like any of the other switch positions. So when we look down here, these switches are also persisted. Anything here that you've changed is going to persist and then of course because of our 3d packs now when we look into the back we see our passengers and if you leave the lav door open when you come back that's also going to be there so next up you're going to see down here on the left you now have a qr code that you can scan and this will take you to a web page that's going to serve up the link to the manual to the tutorial video as well as to the support discord as well and now you can ident of course you need to be in a mode that allows ident to function so again you need to be in ta which is altitude reporting plus will give you only traffic advisory so you see traffic on the display it does not do resolution advisory just tells you traffic Altitude reporting will do altitude reporting, but will not enable traffic. So some people thought TA only meant no altitude reporting. That just refers to the advisory mode only 
and does include altitude reporting. Aircraft systems, this is where you are going to see the system controls has extended and it has exterior lights just like it had before with all of the normal on off, your interior lights, so including the cockpit overhead, and as we mentioned, the fastened seat belts and no smoking are now linked to the AVARs. That means these will work with your third party programs and career tracking where they take these uh, seriously and want these controlled. Plus, if you've got LEDs linked to standard SIMVARs, it's important that these show up. When we come up, you now have a lighting config so you can set the master value for all of your displays and again this persists as well so all that is persisted under utilities you're now going to find aside from initialization you have minimums so you can come in and you can select to toggle between barrow ra temperature compensated barrow off uh, and set up your minimums so when it is entered it will be on your PFD and it will be bugged so as we come to minimums you will see the proper bug on the altitude tape so that's pretty cool you'll also get the call out and you now have timer control so you can go ahead and you can start the timer and you can see your timer on your PFD increasing as well as inside of here and of course you can hit the reset you can hit the start and away it goes also under your checklists you're now going to find that you have a reset all button so that you can reset all of the events on your checklists and we add our procedures you're going to see that when we go to our arrival and we take our Elixu 1 uh, going to runway 26 and we load that arrival we're now going to see under our flight plan that the altitude constraints that load with it automatically populate and of course will show up on your display so if we zoom out you'll see all of your constraints and they show up not only in the VSD but they populate inside of the GTC as well. So that's good. Makes life way easier. You don't have to worry about manually punching it in and you don't have to worry about it only loading to the VSD for those that were on the test files. And complex arrivals are going to load properly and they won't lock the system up anymore. So when we come to the PFD enhancements, it's great to know that yes, these warnings and these ECAS messages are populating the standard master warning and master caution events, which is great. So those will trigger your standard LEDs that you've got on your Honeycomb Bravo or say Turtle Beach. Now PFD settings, this is wonderful. So when you come into your PFD settings, You've got your altitude overlays, so you can toggle uh, synthetic vision on and off. This will persist for you. Also, your flight director. So you can go into the Chevron style, which gives you the magenta angled wing, or with dual cue, you can get your vertical and horizontal lines, and this is going to save with the setup. You've also got your bearing pointers, so being able to pick where you want the bearing pointer set to. And under other PFD settings, you can set up your wind. I prefer option three, as you can see, it maintained it from before. You've got your AOA, whether the AOA is visible or not. And so I leave it always on. And your altitude units. If you set to inches, it will set that to HP. You'll notice this is now also linked automatically setting it here that up here on the on the backup uh, gauge it also changed it. If we click here this is going to change it on both as well. So this button has linked the two together. And then you've got your active nav source or your CDI. And don't forget you need to trigger this 
manually to switch from FMS when you're on an ILS. Not shown because you can't see it, but altitude callouts is also a thing. We're gonna go ahead and cut it here. We just wanted to cover what was new in this video, keep it as short as possible, considering there was so much stuff. We're gonna go ahead, jump into the next one, where we're gonna fly the tutorial all over again using version 1.0.6. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, so you'll come along on those flights. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.